Greetings, voyagers. Look where we are. Look at this. Isn't this magnificent? We finally made it to sunny, warm southern Arizona. And oh, it feels so good. And it is so pretty. Oh, the mountains are just beautiful. There's some snow-capped mountains over there. And, um, and there's just these gigantic saguaro cactus. There's like a whole forest of them over here. And uh, this is this is great. This is what I came to Arizona for. <laughs> so we are camping at a spot called Dripping Spring Road. Uh, it's just outside of Oro Valley, um, about oh, maybe 30 miles outside of Oro Valley, and maybe about uh, I don't know, maybe 10 miles from Winkleman. And it's BLM land. Uh, there's nothing here at the campsites. This is dry boondocking. There's no trash. There's no toilets. There's no nothing. But it's but there is this magnificent natural beauty. And since it's BLM land, we're allowed to camp here for 14 days. And we may just stay at this spot for well, I don't know about 14 days, but um, we're gonna stay here for a while. Uh, for one thing, we kind of have to. <laughs> We're running low on money and I don't get paid for another eight days. So we can't keep driving four or five hours every day like we have been and spending all that money on gas. And we don't need to. This place is just about perfect. Now, it doesn't have trash and it doesn't have bathrooms. But there is a place only a few miles down the road called Christmas Site. It's Christmas Site Recreation Area and there's no sign on the road. You just have to keep an eye out for it. You can see it on the map on Google Maps, look for Christmas site. And how appropriate is that, that we're here during the Christmas holidays? So, uh, yeah, uh, the, and, and the Christmas site has trash and it has bathrooms. And it's just a few miles down the road. So I'm gonna wait until later tonight until I've made sure that nobody else is gonna come and occupy this space. And then I make a quick run down there and drop some trash and come back. I don't wanna lose this spot. We got a beautiful spot. It's just Oh, uh, maybe a couple hundred yards off the highway, off of Route 77. But Route 77 doesn't have a lot of traffic on it. There is some, and you can hear some of the traffic noise, but it's not bothersome to me. I don't mind it one bit. Uh, I'm loving it. I'm just having the time of my life out here. Um, we went and investigated an old abandoned mine yesterday in Gleason, Arizona, and... Uh, uh, that's going to take some time to uh, edit. I, you know, believe it or not, I'm going to post this video tonight. I'm going to try to get this video edited and posted tonight. Today is December 31st, which means that as soon as that sun goes down, it's New Year's Eve. Say goodbye to 2019. Say hello to 2020. How appropriate. <laughs> maybe maybe uh, during the year of 2020, we'll all have better vision. <laughs> and I mean mental perception. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do a panorama in a few minutes. I just want to give out my New Year's message and I uh, get that going and, um, and I'll, I'll send up. You, uh, you're going to have to wait to see the rest of the video I've shot in Arizona already. There's just too much to edit. I'm shooting more material than I can process right now. Um, I still haven't caught up on my summer road trip, I still have probably a half a dozen more videos I need to do from the summer road trip. So while we are, while we are here and not traveling around, I got a lot of work to do. I got those videos to edit and I have to clean out the van. And I mean really give it a good scrub and a good douche. Um, I haven't washed the floor since I installed it back in June. So it's been six months. I sweep it every day, sometimes twice a day, but you know, stuff gets tracked in and we wipe up our spills, but still. Um, I need to scrub the floor. I need to do some more cabinetry in the van. I need to install shelving underneath my, counter, uh, my kitchen counter. I want to pull out shelves so I can put a new stove. I'm gonna get one of those flat Coleman single burner propane stoves. It's like, you know, it's flat. The kind where I've been using where you screw onto the top of the green bottle, those things, are, they're kind of wobbly. I don't, I don't think they're that stable. 
And uh, the little backpacker one that I use that you screw onto a can of um, butane, that one's kind of wobbly too. So I need a new kitchen. I needed a galley kitchen, and that's what I'm going to end up doing. I have to put in some slide-out shelves, buy that um, stove, and then I'll be able to cook. So that's one project that has to get done. I have to take out a whole rack of um, shelves right behind the passenger door. Uh, when I built them, I wasn't able to, somehow there was something blocking it, and I wasn't able to push the whole thing right smack up against the wall. So it's about an inch away from the wall, and, and it sticks out into the space, living space. So wanna, I'm going to have to take that apart, find out what's getting in the way, cut around it, and uh, push it right back up against the wall. we got some traffic going by here. There's been a little bit of traffic going up and down this road. Not too much. I don't know how far back it goes, but it looks like that road goes way, way back. So anyway, there's a lot of work I need to do in the van still. Um, and uh, it's, it's gonna have to wait until I get paid again. Um, you know, we, this is gonna lead into another story, so I might as well just tell it. Uh, if you've been watching my videos, you know that I lost the ATM card to my son's rep payee account. I called my bank back home. They said I couldn't get a new one unless I physically walk into one of their branch offices back in Massachusetts and apply for one. Well, that's not going to happen. So I tried to open a new uh, rep payee account and another personal account for myself with Bank of America because they have branch offices everywhere in every state. So I'm, I would never be more than a day's drive away. So I'm switching over to Bank of America. We finally did get that accomplished, but it was a lot of back and forth between the bank and the Social Security office, which fortunately was right around the corner. So back and forth. And then the Social Security office was closed for two days at Christmas. So it took four days to get this accomplished. But uh, on Thursday, last Thursday, when we finally got this finished, we were waiting in line for the Social Security office to open. And uh, there was a woman, there was a woman standing next to me. And uh, she just turned to me and she said, how was your Christmas? <laughs> and I said, and that's very disarming. That's a good way to approach a stranger, I think. How was your Christmas? Or how was your birthday? How about that? Um, but I, I said, yeah, well, it was okay. Um, you know, we're not at home, we're traveling. and. She wanted to know my story, so I told her the story, and they were living in the van for a couple of years, rents are too high and all that, back in Boston. So um, we had a nice little conversation there, and, um, and then the office opened, and we went in, and, and uh, we took care of our business, and we were in and out of there in just a couple of minutes. She was holding some papers in her, against her, like, uh, I don't know, like in a bag or something. And um, so we got done, we got out, we jumped in the van, we drove up to uh, uh, Bank of America up the street, and just as soon as I got out of the van, this white car pulls up right alongside me and parked, and it was that woman. She had the window down, and she's motioning me over, and I said, hi, and, <laughs> and before I could say anything else, she had this cute little dog who was just up on the windowsill, just trying, this is a tiny little thing, uh, and it, was, it just seemed like it was really happy to see me, very <laughs> wagging its tail, and, and that totally distracted me, and um, and I looked at her and she said, "I wanted to give you, I want to give you something." And I thought, "Oh no, here we go." And she, and she said, "I want to give you some gas money." I said, "Oh no, lady, we're okay." And she says, "No, no, please, I insist." And then and I said, "Oh, if it make you feel better," and she said, "Yes, it would make me feel better. I, I I want to give you some gas money, and so you can enjoy your holiday." I said, well, that's very nice. And I thought she was going to hand me like a 10 or a 20. She handed me a $100 bill. And I said, oh, lady, I can't. Take. She said, I insist. She put it in my hand. She said, you have a happy holiday. And I said, well, you too. And I was just, I was kind of speechless. I, I just thanked her. And I, and I just said, you know, multiple blessings be upon you, lady. And she said, and you too, happy holiday. And she drove off with her cute little dog. Uh, I was, uh, I'm still kind of in a state of shock, um, 
you know, small change I might expect an ordinary person to give, but you don't expect a hundred dollar bill uh, if someone's going to give money to a stranger like that. So um, that was wonderful. That was delightful. That made my day. Still making my day. I, I still am astounded by it. It still uh, got me feeling pretty good about it. So, uh, you know, that's, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> And that's my message of hope and charity for, for the end of 2019 and for looking ahead into the new year. So lady, whoever you are, wherever you are, if you're watching this, you are the antidote to the poison that is sickening our civility today. God bless you. Many, many blessings be upon you. Live long and prosper. And for all my YouTube watchers out there, peace. Happy New Year and 